Coffee remains a major source of income for smallholder farmers in Uganda. Since the processing method affects taste and the market price of coffee, it is important to use methods that will produce premium coffee. This video is focused on wet processing, which produces premium coffee. The procedure requires the use of specific equipment and substantial quantities of water. First, sort through the cherries to remove any that are green or overripe. While sorting, it is essential to place the berries on clean harvesting sheets so that they do not touch the bare ground. The next step is a procedure called floating. To float the coffee, pour the sorted brick red cherries into an uncontaminated pan or basin of clean water. The good ripe cherries will sink to the bottom while the bad or unripe cherries will float. So what is up here uh, is called the, the floats. This one can now be removed since this is the type which has been attacked by pests and diseases. Using your hands, scoop out the floating cherries. And after floating, these floats should not be thrown away. This can also be processed separately and it also can also be sold and as ordinary coffee. For the next step in wet processing, use a depulping machine. For purposes of maintaining the hygiene of our coffee, uh, the pulping machine has to be clean. Uh, it must be washed. Yeah, this machine has to be clean both inside and outside. <laughs> Make sure to rinse the machine thoroughly with clean water before filling it with the ripe cherries. We are now removing the good coffee, which is ready for pulping. The skin of the cherry and some of the pulp is removed by pressing the fruit with the depulping machine. So what we see here is a now good parchment premium coffee. And the husks you are seeing behind here on a, uh, this mat will be collected and be dried and can be used as manure in the garden. If the pulp does not come off at this point, your cherries were not completely ripe. Later, you will need to resort them by hand. It is very important that before you pulp, you have to float your coffee. Uh, it is easier for you to pulp. And uh, you can see how the husks are coming out very quickly just because the, all the beans are ripe. So from here, the coffee is taken to the where it will be fermented from. To remove the mucilage, the thick gluey substance produced by the coffee, you will need to ferment. Mucilage is removed by fermenting the beans and then washing them with large amounts of water. In this next step, we demonstrate the ferment and wash method of wet processing. Much as this coffee was sorted, there are some floats which have also come during this process of fermentation. These floats must also be removed uh, in order to maintain uh, the quality of the parchment premium coffee. For most coffees, mucilage removal through fermentation will take between 24 to 36 hours depending on the temperature, thickness of the mucilage layer and concentration of the enzymes. Carefully monitor the fermentation so that the coffee does not acquire undesirable sour flavors. You can see the color of the, the water has changed. This shows that the mucilage has now broken down and it is now easy for us to wash that coffee. The washing uh, is done at least three times uh, before the coffee is taken to the tray for drying. Feel the cherries to determine whether fermentation is complete. 
When ready, they should have lost the slimy texture and acquired a rougher, pebbly feel. When the beans have been totally fermented, wash the coffee thoroughly with clean water. So you can see that the coffee here is already rough because the mucilage has now broken down. So as we pour this water also which has come from the coffee, the mucilage must also uh, go somewhere where it will be uh, taken to the garden as manure. So the process of washing can be done with water use. Using clean water, wash the coffee beans three times, rubbing gently to remove any last traces of mucilage. After washing the coffee three times, it is now clean and it is now ready for drying. It can then be taken to the tray which is placed slightly above the ground uh, for drying and sorting. Now, what is left is the bin surrounded by two additional layers, the silver skin and the parchment. This is where the coffee will be dried. Drying coffee on a large braised table, occasionally turning by hand, has the advantage of allowing air to circulate better around the beans, promoting more even drying. You are now supposed to sort the, the husks and remove them completely. And also remember to remove those, uh, those that have been broken by the machine during the process of pulping, like these ones here, so that uh, the coffee will look really clean, which is needed as parchment premium coffee. This process continues, and once you have finished the picking, you will now continue with the process of drying, which takes at least uh, seven days before the coffee dries completely. The beans must be dried to a water content of between 11 to 13 percent before they are stable. Uh, we must always also protect our coffee against the uh, rain. When it rains, coffee must be taken back into the house. And uh, when, it is, when it comes to evening, coffee must be taken back into the house for purposes of security. Once dry, store the beans well in clean bags which are free from smells. The coffee bags should be kept off the ground on a wooden platform or on pallets to avoid absorbing moisture from the ground, and they should be kept away from the walls. This is your premium parchment coffee. After the drying process, the parchment skin is thoroughly dry and crumbly and easily removed during the hulling process. It is now ready for sale. For good quality parchment coffee, remember, wet process only the brick red ripe cherries. Use substantial amounts of clean water throughout the process. Always use clean containers and clean the depulping machine often. Dry the cherries to between 11 and 13% moisture on a large surface off the ground. Store the dry coffee in clean dry bags that are off the ground and not touching the walls. Buyers will always remember a farmer who delivers a premium product and a premium product fetches a good price.